Hello, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. As you can see, I'm back here in uh, George Lucas uh, Spaceport, and the reason I'm here is I've basically come back, got rid of my uh, my transporter, and I have pretty much just uh, condensed all my assets back down into one ship yet again, and this time it is my Asp Explorer. As you can see, I have pretty much kitted out my ASP to virtually the best standards possible, apart from, obviously, I'm still missing the best uh, the shield generator here. Now, why have I bo not bothered to... Uh, well, why have I uh, sold off all my ships and condensed down into uh, my ASP, you might ask? Well, that's because if you um, have not been paying attention to any of the... Uh, the forum posts or the uh, the social network sites that uh, beta uh, not beta uh, 1.1 is supposed to be going live tomorrow and considering that there's been so many changes to the route planner and to the discovered by for the stars and planets and so on I thought I might actually give my uh, have a go at uh, doing a little bit of uh, exploring so I've pretty much uh, just got my ship ready to uh, well, basically to handle anything that I come across, really. Because I've not set that this. I've, I've purposefully not set this up as a dedicated uh, exploring sh explorer ship. Uh, I have got the advanced discovery scanner. I also have the detailed surface scanner. So if need be, I can um, basically. Uh, chart systems as, as much as I like. Uh, I've only got a 25 uh, light year jump range because if I set this up fully for an explorer I'd have around about 30. Uh, I've got myself a nice fuel scoop. I've got some good... Uh, I've, got, I've got 64 uh, cargo racks so I can do some trading if I want. I've basically just decided to set this ship up as a jack of all trades. As as well as you can see by the fact that I have the uh, the military grade composites up here. And uh, by my hard points, I've got myself a kill warrant scanner. Uh, I've got a heat sink launcher, but I think I'm actually going to change that one out for... Where is it? Uh, here we go. A frame shift wake scanner. If I can find a slightly, small, a slightly smaller one, that'd be great. But yeah, whatever. I'm not going over my... Uh, uh, over my maximum uh, possible power draw, so that's nice. So I can do some uh, some nice bounty hunting as well. And I've got a couple of point defences, one on top and one underneath, to A, help protect me if I do do some, um, uh, some trading, and also to help protect against missiles. Because so, these, these don't just work against missiles, they work against uh, limpet mines as well. Which I'm going to go into in a bit more detail in uh, one of my later later videos because I am planning a uh, a tutorial on on uh, on the limpet mines itself. I've got a lot of the footage already already sorted. I just need to do uh, some more voiceovers and stuff in there. But yeah, uh, also I have my standard sweep of four grade one mini ca uh, multi cannons, mini cannons, multi cannons, and two beam lasers. Now, once 1.1 hits, I might actually be swapping out these beam lasers for um, uh, for pulse lasers, for the simple fact that uh, there's going to be a big change to the um, uh, to the way the heat management works in the game. Uh, what they're doing is they are adding in uh, heat feedback. So there's going, to be, there's going to be a feedback loop from your uh, from your weapons. If you basically the lower the your um, weapons capacitor is charged, the the less your uh, weapons get cooled by your ship system, ships systems even, <laughs> and um, so it's uh, in turn heats your ship up. I mean, I think at the moment what's happening is they are. Having it, they've they've toned it down a little bit because they've come across a few problems, and what those problems are is that um, uh, in the previous build of um, 
or in the current build of the beta server. The weapons were heating up extremely fast and they were damaging your hull. And a lot of a lot of players didn't like this because it was basically adding too much annoyance on top. So um, yeah, it's fine having heat problems with your weapons, but it's a pain in the arse when it's damaging your hull as well. So when you're in combat and you're trying desperately to stay alive, you're literally killing yourself more efficiently than the enemy might be. So what Frontier are going to do is they're going to change this to uh, having it in basically affect your internal modules. So um, instead of it damaging your hull, it could be damaging your power plant or your uh, thrusters. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think it'd be better if they actually uh, had it damage the modules that were situated closest to your weapons and those, well, and moving further away from your weapons in uh, lower um, to lower degrees they're moving further away from the where your weapons are actually mounted but I'm not sure if they're going to go into that much detail but they're not actually going to implement this as yet they are saying they might actually implement this in 1.2 although that's nowhere near guaranteed um, so what will happen is uh, you'll basically you might get damage to your frame shift drive or your life support or even your power distributors your sensor uh, or even some of your other internal bits now, what, what that basically will mean is that your uh, your internal compartments might start malfunctioning. And now, the only thing that I've actually seen that has any form of in, uh, inter uh, well, the only internal compartment that I've seen that has any form of malfunction is your thrusters. And that's and what happens is your stabilizers go off, and that just turns off your um, uh, your um, flight assist for a little while. But if you're even semi-proficient with uh, with flight assist off, then uh, that's no big issue at all. So what they're going to do is they're going to basically go away, have a look at uh, all the different internal systems, uh, and uh, come up with ideas for the feedback, uh, visual feedback, and audio feedback to the player to let you know when your internal systems are being damaged and what the consequences of that damage will be because at the moment there's not much there's only like I said as far as I've noticed there's only problems with your thrusters um, yeah well that's basically that so yeah like I said uh, as soon as 1.1 hits tomorrow I am thinking of giving it a go and doing a little bit of exploring because I'd love to come across uh, a star system and uh, be the first one to discover it I'd love to do it. It'd be, it'd be amazing for my ego just to see this star discovered by K uh, Commander Chaos Wolf. That'd be awesome. Yeah, what else I was actually planning to do was uh, I'm looking into basically purchasing myself um, a voice attack and one of the uh, voice attack. Um, voice packs from the Elite Dangerous Voice Packs um, uh, website. I can't remember the name of the actual site itself. I'll put it up on screen and put a link in the description to them. Because um, one of the ones that they've got is called uh, Astra. And it that one bugs me a little bit because it has a lot of um, Star, Star Trek references in there. Uh, it feels a lot more oriented towards Star Trek than it does to anything else. And personally, me, I'm more of a Star Wars-y kind of person. I'm fine with Star Trek. I like Star Trek. I've just always preferred Star Wars. Uh, but they are actually coming out with a another voice pack uh, this month called... I think it's called Venus. And there's another couple they've got as well. There's one called Legend and there's one called Mars. Uh, now those two are male voices, and I'm not that fond of them because the only male voice I'd want, as I've said, as I've stated previously, would be uh, Jarvis from Iron Man. But um, I'm going to basically look into getting one of the new, one of the other voice packs, either Astra or Venus. I think it's Venus. I could be wrong. Um, but at least with the Astra one, you can actually customize it and actually have it set to its uh, set the name to it itself. So it'd be nice to have uh, to have that where um, it actually calls me 
Uh, I, it, call, it says, uh, yes, Commander Chaos Wolf. That would be amazing. And you can also, with these uh, expand, the, uh, the expansion, expanded um, customization pack, uh, which isn't like it's basically an upgrade to the normal Astra pack. That um, is um, uh, the normal pack is five pounds, and the upgrade is ten pounds. And it's, uh, from what I understand, it's completed within ten, uh, sorry, twenty-four to forty-eight hours. So basically, you choose uh, your own name. You can choose the name of the computer. If I do this, I'm going to call it Pepper, because uh, any hardcore Marvel fans will know that uh, that's actually uh, Tony Stark's new uh, AI uh, called Pepper when he actually went to join the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so I'll basically, I'll, I'll have it called Pepper. I'll have it call me Commander Chaos Wolf, and then there's the. Option, uh, then you have an option to have your own personal uh, a personal response or two or something, I'm not sure. So I'll have to think about that one. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that out. Because uh, a friend of mine, uh, he's been on the channel a couple of times now, Commander Embryo. He's uh, basically bought it himself. And uh, I was considering it beforehand, but I think that seeing him using this <laughs> voice bikes pretty much pushed me over the edge. So yeah... Um, Commander Embryo's been using, uh, basically using voice attack with Astra, and it's been, it's been a hilarious listening to him actually talking to the computer, and uh, actually having it reply back to him. So I'm thinking I might try that myself, and I'm also thinking of trying the again to install the uh, Face Track No IR software, so uh, so I can actually get the the head movement in. Because I, th I tried doing this before, but what I think I did is I accidentally, um, yeah, I think what I did is I accidentally um, uh, didn't in, uh, there was, there was two, uh, two programs that I needed to install, and um, uh, I forgot to install the second one, which was the, uh, the virtual joypad. I think that's actually what I needed to uh, actually control the game, and I didn't actually install that one. So I'm going to give that one a go again to try and uh, give myself some more, uh, uh, some more control and a bigger set, a better center immersion in the game. But uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I know this this was only basically going to be a short video. I apologize if it's uh, just me sitting in my hangar just rambling on. But uh, yeah, that's. Um, Basically, just wanted to let you know what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm up to at the moment, and what I'm planning to do. So yeah. Uh, th anyway, thank you very much for watching the watching this video, guys. Uh, if you liked it, please, as always, please do hit that uh, like button. It really does help the channel out. And also, please do consider hitting that subscribe button to get uh, updates whenever I actually introduce new videos. Because uh, we all like to know when our favourite videos are coming up. Look at me sounding all big-headed and everything. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been Commander Chaos Wolf. Remember, guys, stay, stay, uh, keep flying and stay shiny. I always mock that bit up at the end. <laughs>